five months. That is all you have left until your A-level exams. But let me tell you, five months is more than enough time to transform your grade. Whether you are aiming for that A or A star or just desperately need to at least pass, you have the time to be able to make that improvement. And that's what I'm gonna be talking you through today. In this video, I'm gonna share with you exactly how to improve by two grades in the time you have left. And trust me, if you believe in yourself and follow all of this advice, you will go into your exams ready to smash it and get those grades. Make sure you stick around to the end because you will need to follow all of these tips for it to be possible to make that improvement. Number one, I am starting with one of the things that I think is potentially the most important and is often so overlooked and it is your mindset. So let's start there talking about your mindset. If your mocks didn't go as you planned and maybe you got a pretty low grade or maybe you've seen class test results recently and you didn't do very well. It might feel like you now have this impossible mountain to climb and you don't have the time, you don't have the energy, the motivation to possibly improve. And it's so easy to feel overwhelmed with this and just want to give up. But here's the truth. Progress isn't linear. Some weeks you will feel like you are absolutely smashing it and other weeks you will feel stuck and like there is no hope. And that is completely normal and okay. So here is what I want you to remember when you are in those times where you feel stuck and like it's hopeless and you're never going to improve and everyone else is, you can improve. Your grades right now are your starting point from this date. They are not your final grade and you have the control and power to change that and increase the grade. Consistency beats perfection. Show up every day, even if you don't feel like it. And even if it's just for a small amount of time, consistency is what makes the difference. Which by the way, that's a big one for me. If you follow me on Instagram, you will see that I'm definitely not a perfectionist. I have so many typos in my emails, in my Instagram posts, but it's because for me, it's about consistency. I have an idea, I wanna get it out there for you. And I'm not bothered about being perfect. I just want to get the work done and be able to help you. And it's the same here with your study. Your notes don't have to look beautiful and perfect. It doesn't matter if you didn't perfectly follow the guide or plan you had for the day. Just consistently try and put the hours in and it does make a difference. And then the last thing linked to this mindset is believe in yourself. If you don't think you can do it and you constantly tell yourself that you can't, then guess what? You won't do it. You will not improve. But if you stick with it and believe in yourself and keep telling yourself that I can improve, you'll be amazed at just what you're able to achieve. So my final note on this is to remember this point. The students that start the strongest or with the highest grade at this point are necessarily the ones who get the best end result grade. The students that get the best grades are the ones who refuse to give up. So make sure you are one of those students who absolutely refuses to give up no matter what is thrown at you. Number two, we're getting more into the nitty gritty practicals now, and that is having a plan and staying organized. If you don't have a clear short term and long term plan for your study, for your revision, it's easy for you to end up wasting time and panic revise before a test and even before your final A levels. So here's how to set yourself a long term plan to follow. Step one of your plan is setting your goals. Before you can come up with the strategies of your plan, you need to know what your end point is that you're trying to achieve. So decide on what your end goal is and then have a look at your specification to see what you need to put in place to make sure you can achieve that goal. So the sorts of things you could be doing with your spec is maybe ticking off topics that you know you're already pretty good on that you are confident you understand and you can remember the theory and highlighting or circling the parts of the spec that you are not as confident on. You could do the same thing with exam technique as well. And this links back to my previous video last week where I talked about how to improve post marks. You can have a look at that video to give you an idea of how you can identify what you personally need to do to improve to put those in as small steps, weekly targets you can do to get you to that end goal. Number two is create a revision tracker so you are holding yourself accountable. You need to be saying what you're planning to do each week and then have a tracker to make sure you achieve that at some point throughout that week. If you're not setting yourself small little goals that you can track and monitor, then it's easy to get lost and never actually do anything towards getting to your end goal and then you won't get there. So make sure you are setting yourself small manageable tasks that you can track. Whether that is you pick a particular topic, let's say oxyhemoglobin dissociation curves. And for this week, you're going to be doing the flashcards and maybe short answer questions 
decisions on that topic. You can then track at the end of the week, did you do that? Now, if you need help doing that, you can do one of two things. You could ask ChatGPT to help you to create this tracker. You just need to give it the timeline and the activities you want and ask it to present it as a table. You can copy and paste that into Excel and you've got a study tracker. If you want one that is ready made for you, I've actually got one on my website for, I think all of the UK exam boards where it has every single spec point and you can then change the cells to track whether you've covered that topic and then you get a percentage progress as well to see how you're doing. So I'll link that in the description below. The next part of your plan to make sure you reach that end goal is making sure you do have a balance between focusing on the theory and on the skills. And the reason for this is almost half of your A-level will be application. However, application is application of knowledge. So you have to have that knowledge for the application questions and also for the knowledge questions. So make sure you are balancing, reviewing and testing yourself on the topics as well as the skills. And if you need help with the skills, I have an entire playlist on YouTube, which is about every skill on the A-level. So you can check out that playlist, go through how to revise and how to improve at those skills. So try and come up with a plan where you are balancing the topics as well in the theory. And if possible, and this is where it does get tricky, if possible, repeatedly look over topics. Because if you revise something that you find hard right now in January, when you then get to June, that was five months ago, you're not gonna remember it. So try and interlace your revision, meaning if you know there are five topics you find particularly hard, keep alternating each week which one you're doing. And that way you'll be doing each of those topics approximately once a month leading up to your final exam. And then my final step, part three, are my three golden rules for all revision sessions that you're doing. Whether that is thinking of a session as an entire week or an entire five months now, it's the three steps that you should be following. When you are revising, you need to follow the understanding stage, remembering and practice. Those are your three key steps. And step one is always making sure, do you understand? So you need to make sure you understand the theory if you're going over a topic or a particular practical, what the purpose of it was, why you used a particular piece of equipment, or do you understand how to do a maths question? So understanding is step one. And to make sure you can understand, what I recommend is either watching YouTube videos like I have covering all the skills or the topics, or using your notes, your textbook, or you might have my notes and you need to be actively engaging in these resources. So if you are watching my YouTube videos, pause as you go, maybe make notes, maybe write down key terms. Don't just sit and watch and let the information flood into your brain because you need to actively engage with it to check your understanding. Same with the notes, don't just sit and read. You might want to read a section, pause, test, can you recall it back to yourself? You might want to read a section, turn it into flashcards. Something to actively engage to make sure you're processing and understanding the information. Step two is the remembering part. And this is where you need to be test, test, testing your memory. Active recall is how to test your memory. And the more times you test your memory, the stronger that long-term memory will be. And you've probably heard me say this so many times now, which I hope is the case, because that means it'll be embedded in your long-term memory, how to remember things. Make sure you're doing activities like flirting, flashcards, active recall questions, testing each other. And in particular, range is really useful as well. And I do you have mark scheme specific flashcards that I update every year to reflect any changes in the mark scheme for AQA and OCRA. And I've got my active recall workbook for OCRA and AQA as well. So both of these resources are linked below. And finally, it is the practice stage. You should have spent about 20% of your time understanding, 40% of your time remembering, and the final 40% of your time is practicing. And this means doing exactly exam questions. So this could be topic specific, skill specific, or entire past papers, but you must make sure you are leaving 40% of your time to do these questions. And that doesn't just mean 40% of your time chunked on right at the end in May. I'm talking about if we think about one week's worth of revision, 20% is understanding, 40% remembering, 40% exam questions. So each week you should be having that sort of balance. The closer you get to the exams, you might need to reduce the under 
understanding point and then gets a 50-50 of remembering and application doing the questions. And the closer you get, so maybe now we're in April or May, you might even shift that to 60% of the time you're doing practice. And when you're a couple of days before the exam, it's probably pretty much going to be practice. And as I say, most of my videos, I have exam papers for free on my freebies tab, missesher.co.uk. You can get them by topic, end of unit topic test. I've got mock papers and I've got skill-based bundles as well. So download all of those and you've got a whole bank that you can be practicing with. If you follow these three steps consistently with your long-term plan, then you will see improvements over time. Consistency is key. Part four, I'm going to throw in a little bonus tip. Something that I haven't talked about in a while. And this is maybe if you struggle with focus, procrastination, you need to try out different strategies to help you be really in focused in the time you're working. So if you struggle with procrastination, you need to go for short bursts of effective revision interlaced with breaks. So short bursts and frequent breaks, and you're doing this interlaced. So following something like the Pomodoro technique could be perfect for you, where you would do 20 to 25 minutes of really focused work, and then you give yourself a five, 10 minute break. Then you go back on again, 20 to 25 minutes working, five to 10 minute break. And that would then means within an hour, you've done a decent chunk of revision, but it shouldn't have felt too strenuous because it was a relatively short period of time with an allowed break, and then you continued again. And also track your wins and successes. Give yourself a reward. So when you're reviewing each week, whether you hit everything you wanted to do, give yourself rewards. If you did everything, it could be, I don't know what it is, an amount of time playing a game. It could be a particular food treat that you want. Who knows what it might be? Whatever the reward is, or even agree with your parents, can you get a little reward each time? Although don't bankrupt them. Come up with something that if you do everything on your list, this is the reward I'll give myself. If I only do 75%, I get this reward. 50%, I get this. Anything less than 50%, I don't get the reward that week. So come up with something that will help motivate yourself as well. And remember your end goal is not to be perfect every day or even every week. It's about showing up at the times you've said, even if just for a small amount of time, just so you don't get out of the habit of doing the work. So consistency is key. I wonder how many times I've said that in this video. Consistency is key. Probably quite a lot because it is. At least I've been consistent with it. So there we have it. My <laughs> ultimate five month goal to make two grades of progress. Follow all of these steps and strategies. Watch the videos that I've advised you to. Download the free exam questions and believe in yourself because you can improve. Five months might not sound like a lot, but it's actually a long time to make improvements if you're going to follow these strategies and be consistent and believe in yourself. That's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful and I'll see you in the next one for more tips to get you those grades in June.